Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam, and today we will learn about normal and CADRADS-4 on coronary CT angiography. We will also learn about high-risk plaques. We will compare the normal coronary artery appearance on CT angiography with coronary arteries that have severe coronary artery disease. CADRADS-0 is given for normal arteries. There is no presence of stenosis or plaque in the artery. No further evaluation for this because the artery is normal. CADRADS-4 indicates severe stenosis. It has two types, CADRADS-4A and 4B. In 4A, the stenosis is between 70 and 99% in at least one major coronary artery, such as the left anterior descending artery, left circumflex artery, or the right coronary artery, but not the left main coronary artery. In this image, we see a plaque in the right coronary artery, causing a severe stenosis that seems to be between 70 and 99%. We can see most of the lumen is obstructed and only a very thin, bright line is visible. The artery enhances normally distal to the stenosis, so this is classified as CADRADS 4A because there is severe stenosis in a major coronary artery. The other arteries were normal. Plaque burden is P1 because only one artery has plaque. CADRADS-4 is a serious condition. There is high probability of ischemia in the affected region of the heart. Here is another case showing a CADRADS-4 lesion, a low-density plaque in the right coronary artery. It is causing severe stenosis, which seems to be between 70 and 99%. A very small area is unobstructed and the artery enhances normally distal to the plaque. So this is not an occlusion. Plaque burden is P1 because only one segment contains a plaque. This plaque is also causing severe stenosis, falling into Kadrad's 4 category. Almost the entire lumen is narrowed, but a small portion is open and the enhancement distal to the stenosis is normal. In CADRADS 4B, there is a stenosis of 50% or more in the left main coronary artery, or if there is more than 70% stenosis in all three major coronary arteries, which are the left descending, left circumflex, and the right coronary artery. In this normal image, this is the left main coronary artery. There is no narrowing of the lumen and no presence of any plaque. The enhancement is normal. In the image on the right, a low-density plaque is present in the left main coronary artery. The stenosis seems to be greater than 50%. Because of this plaque in the left main artery and a stenosis greater than 50%, it will be classified as 4B. Also, there are high-density and mixed plaques present, so these are high-risk plaques. We will look at them later on. This plaque is somewhat subtle, but seems to be causing a severe stenosis that almost includes the entire lumen. It was graded as CADRADS 4 AP1. This plaque has a mixed density. Almost half of it is calcified and the other half is non-calcified and hypodense. The stenosis is severe. Almost the entire lumen is stenosed. This was classified as CADRADS 4 AP1. This plaque is present in the left circumflex artery. The stenosis seems to be between 70 and 99%. This was a CADRADS 4 AP1 lesion. This is a CADRADS 4A coronary artery disease. The maximum stenosis seems to be between 70 and 99%. Due to the presence of severe amount of plaque in a single artery, the plaque burden is P3. 
If you find many plaques in only one artery and other arteries are normal, you can classify it as P3. So this case is CADRADS 4P3. These are axial images of the heart focusing on the left main coronary artery. In the normal image, there is no high or low density plaque present in the artery. No stenosis is present and the enhancement is normal. In the image on the right, a non-calcified plaque is present in the left main coronary artery. The plaque pretty much involves the entire lumen. This case will be classified as CADRADS 4B. Now we will look at the features of high-risk plaque. High-risk plaque, or HRP, is a modifier and is used in cases where there is a very high risk of coronary event, regardless of the CADRADS score. The first feature of HRP is positive remodeling. This refers to an outward abnormal expansion of the artery's wall at the site of the plaque. The artery enlarges to preserve the lumen size. This is called compensatory enlargement. In the image, this feature requires a close-up magnified view. Here we can see this non-calcified gray color plaque in the artery. And this black region is the vessel wall. The vessel wall is darker than the plaque. This point is the interface between the vessel wall and the plaque. If we measure the diameter at this point and compare it with the diameter proximal and distal to the plaque, we can see that the diameter at the site of stenosis is greater than the diameter at these points. This indicates that the vessel wall has expanded to try to preserve the lumen size. This expansion is called positive remodeling. This is a feature of a high-risk plaque. The stenosis seems to be between 70 and 99%, so this will be classified as CADRADS 4AHRP. The plaque burden score is not needed if HRP is used. The next feature of a high-risk plaque is the napkin ring sign. It is often seen when a significant portion of the plaque has low attenuation or density and has a smaller outer portion of high-density calcified plaque and there is a small portion of the normal lumen. It may be seen in CADRADS 4 lesions. Basically, it has a low attenuation core, which is a dark center consisting of lipid-rich or necrotic material, and a higher attenuation rim, which is a bright outer layer of fibrous tissue. This sign is also examined in the cross-section view of the affected artery. This image is a cross-section of this part. It is hazy but shows three distinct regions. A dark central low attenuation core is present and it is surrounded by a high attenuation bright outer rim. This brighter region is the vessel lumen. So this appearance looks similar to the ring of a folded napkin. That's why it is called the napkin ring sign. We come back to this case we saw earlier. Here we see many small dotted hyperdense calcifications in low density non calcified plaques. These are called spotty calcifications, and this is another feature of a high risk plaque. So this case is classified as CADRADS 4B HRP. Here is another case showing multiple tiny punctate calcifications within a low density plaque. This appearance indicates a high-risk plaque. Management for KDRADS-4 A cases requires referral for invasive coronary angiography. Revascularization procedures such as coronary angioplasty or coronary artery bypass grafting are considered based on coronary anatomy, symptoms, and ischemia evidence. Medications such as statins, antiplatelets, and antianginal meds are prescribed and risk factor modification is strongly recommended. 
for CADRADS 4B, invasive coronary angiography is strongly recommended, and there is a much higher likelihood of needing coronary artery bypass surgery because of the involvement of left main coronary artery or complex triple vessel disease. Intensive risk factor modification and pharmacologic therapy are advised. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more imaging videos.